dear friends in Jesus Christ. For some weeks now, our readings, especially the gospel, have continued to tell us that Jesus is the bread of life. This is to remind us of the importance of the Holy Eucharist in our Christian life. In the first reading from the book of Proverbs, we encounter a beautiful and profound image of God's wisdom. She is depicted as a noble and elegant woman who invites everyone to a feast that bestows both wisdom and life. This image of feasting and eating the food and drink that wisdom provides is a metaphor for reading and learning the principles of wisdom contained in the book of Proverbs. But it also foreshadows a greater meal that God would one day provide, a meal that gives wisdom and eternal life to his people. In the gospel, Jesus speaks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. These are not merely a metaphor for believing in him. They point to the mystery and sacrament of Eucharist. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, the Eucharist is a body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ given to us under the consecrated species of bread and wine. Jesus tells us that he is the bread of life. Bread, as we know, is made to be eaten. And to eat, we must be hungry. A person who is hungry knows the value of bread. How can we truly understand what it means to be Christians if we have lost a hunger for God? We must have hunger to know him, to treat him as a good friend, to make him known and to share him, just as one shares bread at the table. Imagine the head of the family cutting good bread which he has earned through his hard work and giving it abundantly to his children. In the same way, Jesus gives himself as the bread of life. He gives himself generously and without measure. When Jesus spoke about eating his flesh, people wondered and then disputed among themselves. How can we eat his flesh? Let us consider two miracles Jesus performed. The first one, the multiplication of the bread. Jesus multiplied five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people. In this miracle, we can say, he transformed the bread so that everyone could eat and be satisfied. Second miracle, the miracle of walking on the water. Like ships are constructed from materials that would sink in their natural form. But when built in a certain way, they float. Similarly, Jesus transformed his body in such a way that he did not sink. So, if Jesus could transform his body to walk on the water and the bread to satisfy the hunger of thousands, can he not also transform his flesh into host so that we can consume it. The entire life of Jesus was dedicated to offering himself as spiritual nourishment for each one of us. From birth to death, every action he took was aimed at becoming the Eucharist. His public ministry, the miracles, carrying of the cross, the rejection by his disciples, the trials, crucifixion, death, even and resurrection, all were undertaken to become the Eucharist. He endured immense sufferings to bestow this gift upon us, to be with us and to provide us with sustenance for our spiritual journey. Yet do we truly value it? Often our prayers lean towards other blessings like good health, successful career, academic achievements, so on and so forth. It is important that we should pray for it, but he can give us these blessings even without sufferings. He can give this blessing at any, any moment of life. But to give Eucharist, he has suffered a lot. However, we sometimes overlook the most precious gift for which he endured so much. 
Sometimes in our priority list, the Eucharist is the last priority. We should remember, devaluing the gift is equivalent to devaluing the giver. So let us therefore renew our hunger for Eucharist. Let us approach the Eucharist with reverence and gratitude, recognizing it as the greatest gift we could ever receive. Today I all stand before you to present the Diocese of Chanda, the first Sierra Malabar Mission Diocese, a beacon of faith and hope in the heartland of India. The Diocese of Chanda, located in Maharashtra, in the region, Vidarbha region, faces many challenges. The region is underdeveloped, there the climate is harsh, the people are poor, and have low literacy level, and the Christianity is a minority religion there. Despite these challenges, the missionaries in Chanda have been steadfast in their commitment to spreading the gospel. We have embraced the local culture, learned the local languages, and successfully brought thousands of people into faith. The diocese has demonstrated remarkable growth over the years, primarily in rural areas. The diocese is actively involved in a diverse range of endeavors encompassing spiritual, educational, social, economic, cultural, agricultural, and ecological realms. It exhibits a steadfast commitment to promoting human development and uplifting impoverished and marginalized communities. However, considering the vast area of the diocese, we need more missionaries to serve the diverse needs of the community. The Gospel of Luke reminds us the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the field. This is very much true with regard to the situation in Chanda. However, this journey of formation requires resources. It requires dedicated teachers, suitable facilities, and a supportive community. Above all, it requires financial support. The cost of training a single missionary can be substantial, covering not just their education, but also their living expenses, health care, and pastoral activities. A well-formed missionary can touch thousands of lives, bring them the hope and love of Christ. They can transform communities, build churches, and make a lasting impact on the world. In the face of economic challenges and increasing secularism, the need for well-formed missionaries is more critical than ever. We need missionaries who can articulate the faith clearly, defend it courageously, and live it authentically. I appeal to you today is to support this vital work both spiritually and financially. Your contribution, no matter how small, can make a big difference. It can support a missionary on his journey of formation, enabling them to bring the light of Christ to those who need it most. I assure you of my prayers, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity. May God bless us with compassionate hearts and guide us in our missionary, in our mission to serve him and serve one another.